The Nishnabi Aski Nation Decade for Youth and Development Program, in cooperation with the NAN Decade Youth Council, co-hosted the first annual Seven Sacred Teachings Youth Gathering from January 30th to February 3rd, 2006. The conference was an experiential program designed to introduce NAN youth, as well as frontline workers, to the traditional strength building teachings and ceremonies of the Anishinaabe and Muskego people. Originally designed as a measure to discourage self-harm activities, the program has been successful in beginning the healing process for the Anishinaabe Aski Nation's youth. It is estimated that approximately 1,000 NAN youth have benefited from attending this annual youth gathering to date. After a break of several years, the NAN youth have made their voice heard again and are speaking up. Since the introduction of the Office of the Provincial Advocates Feathers of Hope Youth Conference, the NAN youth have again reiterated that they need their own venue, voice, and backdrop as to how they wish to present their issues, dreams, and voice to the needs of the youth in the NAN territory. The Seven Sacred Teachings was again revitalized to hear specifically from the NAN youth. The Ashkadaza Council believe that it is their voice that needs to be heard and addressed as a much larger, more reflective voice coming from the whole NAN territory. This is the only way that the needs, aspirations, dreams and goals of NAN youth will be heard. The big gathering, as it became affectionately known, was the result of a number of planning sessions by the Ashkadaza Council, comprised of NAN youth members who have been asked to represent their respective portion of the NAN territory. There were numerous teleconferences and a couple of face-to-face -face meetings, not to mention the numerous times on social media. This resulted in two focus groups which led up to the final result, the rebirth of the Seven Sacred Teachings Youth Gathering. This gathering took place on March 3rd to the 6th of 2016, which involved a combination of lectures, cultural activities, workshops and entertainment. This year there was also a gala to celebrate being alive, and past youth council members were honoured. As well, all appropriately aged youth were engaged in specific suicide prevention training. There was also traditional skills built in among the helpers, such as the fire keepers, sweat lodge helpers, teepee construction, administration staff, and drummers. Most of these young people had ties to the NAN territory. enjoying being here. I like going to youth gatherings, I like meeting new people. I like that Stan's here, he's emceeing, it's a lot more fun, we get to laugh. And yeah, it's just a great, a great scene to be around. It's important for Nan to hold, host these forums so people will come to Nan more often rather than other places and when, when students come to NAN forums, they feel welcomed and they will tell their friends how they felt and then it'll be a good environment and a good outcome for NAN and it's really fun too. What stand out for me is the pee, the pee pee and having an elder Annie Matadawabin to tell us that what happened in our in our culture and what how life was back was like back then and I don't just seen new faces or in familiar faces from the last gathering. Meeting and experiencing things is different so I want to say Intercity Mall because you got to see what everyone was like when they're doing their own thing and I got to actually know them rather than sitting around with people talking about things they may not be as interested in. Lots of people live on the res, uh, and on the res there aren't as many opportunities, but when you go to youth conferences like what NAN hosts and other organizations host, you get to see things, doors open, and it gives people my age motivation to do 
better things and to move forward. Well, if this is going out to the Chiefs, I just want to say good job. I also want to say if your reserve is getting a youth council and or if it has a youth council, not like I don't want you to interfere with it too much because it's for the youth and it's by the youth, so they should have their own say and do what they want. I, a youth council shouldn't be like they come up with an idea and then the adults sort of change their idea. They're, it's like changing their vision. You want their vision to be theirs, so let them do their thing and you can do yours. Just guide them. What has been uh, the one highlight that has stuck out for you since being here? Uh, safe talk, honestly, because there's a lot of people in our community that have this addiction or family problems or just from our past, like way past. And it's really, for the training, is like really informative of what we need to know if we come into this situation in our community. Could be a family member, could be just another community member that you're not that close to. Could be anyone around you, honestly, in the, in the reserve. And yeah, it's good to know for these type of situations. My highlight so far probably would be just meeting everybody from all, all the different reserves and probably just speaking out more and giving that courage to the youth and giving, trying to encourage them to have voice and spread messages across communities all across. Open's opportunities and, and ideas that, that we, we need to work on and, and let, let everybody know that you're not alone, that we all have the same problems and if we all get together that we, we solve our issues. I have my highlight here to focus on my school, um, to go to college. My main goal for the future is to teach in Chibwe. I'm a native language teacher. As I was uh, interested into this one article when I was reading news. This guy from Toronto. Uh, I don't remember his name, but I was uh, really interested into uh, reading that article. But uh, the university is trying to get more native language teachers to teach you. I think the fact it's really, really important to have uh, all of the gatherings around the world to, to make uh, people encourage other people, make strong families and relationships, to have sobriety, to enjoy life, what's good. A lot of people here taught me like how to respect others, no matter how, like, whatever like they do or stuff like that. And that we're all like together as one. If you have a choice or like a decision to make, go for the one that scares you the most. So you can like conquer your fears and you never know what the outcome will be. After the day was done, the conference room was transformed into a beautifully decorated ballroom for a formal gala for the youth. The youth looked amazing in their formal attire. A photo booth was set up whereby everyone got to have their pictures taken professionally. There were prizes, spot dances, line dancing, contests, and fun for everyone. As on the previous days, a sunrise ceremony was held with a pipe being passed around and the prayers sent for gratitude, success and gifts on their way and for the life that had been lost. On this day, the youth took over the agenda and they were separated into seven groups, which was to align themselves with the seven sacred teachings of truth, honesty, bravery, courage, wisdom, humility, and love. This is where the Youth Council came up with five open-ended questions to pose to the youth. One, what do you envision for your community? Two, what are barriers to your vision? Three, what do you need to overcome barriers? Four, what do you need to make that change in your community? Five, what areas would you like to see the Nishnabi Aski Nation Executive assist in advocacy for these areas? Leaders, chiefs, adults, elders, parents, at times the best thing we could ever say to these kids is this.
That's it. Hey, we'll see you next year. But let's sit. Let's relax. Let's give them their space. We need not ever need to say anything. Let's give them their space that they really deserve. That's what they really want from us. Don't you worry about him, cause he won't amount to nothing. Come on, pick yourself up off the ground and show them what it means to be a strong and proud native man, provided for his family. You may think it's too late to fight, but there's still time to change your life. They judge us all from what they see, what the stereotypical used to be. We were once. Out there in the cold, the poor young girl is 12 years old.